Oh, it's not, it's a frog. Hi, Froggy, I thought you were a little gerbil. Go, move out the, over there. Can you see it now? Or was it too close? Ferg? Yeah. Can, can you see him? Yeah. Perfect. So, this is a little, one of the, uh, this is an eastern leopard toad that we're looking at at the moment. How cool is that? So that's what was bounding across the road. Oh, I was really hoping that it was going to be a bushveld gerbil, because I haven't seen one in such a long time. But at least it's a frog of some sort, toad. I, I quite in, um, enjoy frogs and toads and all the rest of the amphibians. But it's not quite fully grown just yet. I'm going to show you with my hand if it doesn't hop out of the way. Pfft. We get a piece of grass, but you can see compared to my hand, look at that, not particularly big, actually quite small, and that will triple in size before it reaches its final stage, but very cool, you can actually see, it's actually very scared, if you look very carefully, you'll see how quickly it's breathing, so perhaps we shouldn't disturb this little fella for too much longer, now it probably thinks that we're an owl or something wanting to jump up and try and eat it, but of course that's not the case. I'm not interested in eating any frogs or toads. We will leave them behind. And if you look very carefully, I'm gonna try and point it out with a piece of grass. Can you see these swollen parts just behind the eye over there and over there? Those are called parotid glands. And that is what uh, and where the bufotoxins are secreted. So often when you see mongoose or jackals eating frogs and toads, well, particularly toads, you'll often see that they leave the head and those parotid glands behind because that's where all the chemicals are housed and not great. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave this little chap to carry on with his adventure. Hopefully it doesn't get eaten by a snake. But